Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are in this beautiful world. And if you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin Family YouTube channel for the newcomers. My name is Didi. Uh, today, again, walking this beautiful beach in Phuket, talking about Bitcoin, blockchain, and life, of course. Amazing charts. I have four amazing charts, a trading tip, a travel tip, some live advice, and, of course, talking about the news because something is happening in Thailand at the moment. And I forgot my correct selfie stick so I'm filming with a different selfie stick so uh, my face is a little bit more up close than you're used to so enjoy that beautiful face <laughs> guys I hope you all had an amazing weekend I had an amazing weekend two lives an English one and a Dutch one it was a lot of fun but now let's quickly jump into the charts to see what exact is happening to Bitcoin Bam. the first chart for today guys is a six month chart six months every candle is six months well i want to show you that from the halving moment two huge bullish green candles are formed every time again and again and that's six month candles so that's 12 month bullish movements so if you zoom out a lot then you will understand what i'm saying let's go back over here 2013 over there this is 2012 here we have the first six month bullish candle they're the second six month bullish candle okay now that's maybe a little bit too far away let's go to 2017 here in 2016 we had the halving the halving was followed by one huge bullish candle a second huge bullish candle these candles don't be fooled are starting at 550 dollars and that one ended at the top around three thousand dollars this candle started at twelve hundred dollar ended at the top around 17 or like eighteen thousand dollar almost so huge bullish candles too now look to, to 2020 21 2020 we had a halving then here first bullish candle huge one that was one from 8k all the way up to 30k second one 15k all the way up to 60k uh, 70k almost guys and then even a third bullish candle but that third candle is always smaller than the previous two candles just look here in 2017 that is a third candle smaller than the previous two candles now again we had that bear market sideways market after the halving which will happen in this candle we will get two more really bullish candles for bitcoin halving happening in this candle then two bullish candles in bitcoin and that will bring us all the way up into 2025 to see a new all-time high very simple chart but very interesting to see if i will zoom out you can see all the candles that indeed every halving is followed up by two insane huge green six month candles in this chart you can see the bull market comparison we can see the red the blue and the green line the red line is 2013 the blue line is 2017 and now that green line is 2021. You can see exactly where we are. You can also see that these bull markets have every time been rhyming. It's always the same kind of move. We go up between day 400 and 600, we come down again, and we form a bear market bottom between 800 and 1000, and then around 1000, 1200, we go slowly up again, and then from 1200 to 1400 until the halving, we will go up again a little bit more towards that halving, guys. And then the new line will start again totally on the left side on the chart and that line will start again in the beginning running up really high today 400 because that will be the bull market top between 400 and 600 and then again coming down into a bear market so if you want to have some homework for today i would screenshot this chart and draw that new line starting on the left side from the halving moment on 2024 how you think it will go into the top between day 400 and 600. That's just to see if you really understand this four year cycle now. This chart also very interesting is showing us that the miners have a certain cost to keep mining one Bitcoin. And from the halving, the average price of all these miners to create one Bitcoin, to mine one Bitcoin will be 40,000 US dollar. So when the Bitcoin price will be down below the 40,000 US dollar, all the miners are making losses. If we look back in Bitcoin's history, there are certain moments that the miners make losses, but on average, they make a shitload of profit. So that tells me that that $40,000 Bitcoin price 
could also be that new bottom for this huge bull market because the miners don't want to make losses. And from that halving, they are paying $40,000 for each Bitcoin they mine. So the price needs to be at least 10% to 20 cents above it to make some profits. Very interesting chart. Pause it to analyze it a little bit more. This is the Bitcoin MVRV Z score. Very important indicator. I've been showing this indicator already for years. Every time when we hit that dotted blue line, that is a sell signal, guys. Look, that was the top of the bull market in 2014, sell signal. In 2017, sell signal. In 2021, sell signal. If we now draw that line dotted downwards to touch all of the stops, the next stop of the bull market will be again when we hit with an MVRV score that dotted line. We are still not there. I believe that's going to happen in 2025, but the moment that blue line starts to hit this dotted line, that is the moment you should be dollar cost averaging out of Bitcoin because that will again be the top of the bull market. How high the top is, we don't know. But we do know that that is the moment that we start to dollar cost average out of Bitcoin. This chart is showing you exactly why we should not be in dollars, but we should be in Bitcoin. The purchasing power of $100 since the 1st of January 2000 dropped from $100 all the way to almost $60. So you can't buy the same amount of goods anymore that you were able to buy with $100 in 2000 in 2022. You are buying 40% less. Your purchasing power dropped with 40%. If your salary didn't grow with 40% at least, you're losing because you're holding your capital in dollars. That is as simple as it is. And I'm talking about your salary without making more hours, without having a promotion, without having all that stuff, because that's completely different. You are losing purchasing power every day because of inflation, because of the governments and the central banks printing a shitload of fake money into the industry out of thin air. That is not possible with Bitcoin. That is why Bitcoin is the best form of money we have ever seen in our lives. And then, of course, the update about the spot ETF, um, the iShares Bitcoin Trust and Fidelity combined are by now accumulating way more Bitcoins and creating way more volume than Grayscale is doing because of the dumping. And so it's very positive to see that now the inflows are turning positive, usually because of iShares and Fidelity, but also ARK, Bitwise, Avisco, Vanek, Velkaya, Franklin and Wisdom3, they're all accumulating a shitload of millions of bitcoins every day which now in total is way bigger than the outflows we see in grayscale guys so from now on the real accumulating is starting from now on the market will slowly dry up because there is not enough bitcoins because there is not enough supply for the demand that these spot etfs will have so that is drying up the market which will lead to an increase of the price that is just how the market economics works. I hope you really enjoyed the chart, guys. Uh, yes, in the short term, that inverse head and shoulders on the four hour could be playing out. That is why we are taking these longs also in the trading signal group. Uh, they were two not that good longs the last time. I think it's 12% in loss at the moment, but please zoom out. But I will come back to that later. Now, if you look at those other charts, you will understand why you shouldn't be in the dollar anymore because the purchasing power of the dollar went from 100 to 50, which means you only can buy half of the stuff that you were able to buy uh, in 2000. So in 23 years, the purchasing power has dropped with almost 50%, guys. Now, these other charts, of course, telling you to zoom out, look at the bigger picture, halving upcoming, we will see 50K, we will see 60K, and we will see 70K this year. It is an amazing year for Bitcoin. Now The trading tip for today, guys, is about the Bollinger Band. Because the Bollinger Band is part of the Bitcoin family indicator setup that we use uh, on TradingView. The Bollinger Band consists out of three lines. The middle line, which is a simple moving average, 
and the top and the bottom line that are standard deviations from that simple moving average. So that Bollinger Band is telling you where a lot of selling pressure will be on the top and where a lot of buying pressure will be on the bottom. So these top and bottom lines are perfect indications of when to exit your trade or when to enter your trade because that's a deviation of the simple moving average. And if you look back to the last 21 uh, candles, for example, we can see that mostly when we touch those bands, the bottom or the top band, we reverse in the market. So it's a very cool indicator, the Bollinger Band, that you can use to determine when you should be entering the market or exiting the market if you're earning a trade or if you are looking for the optimal buying opportunity in the short term. Long term, I don't use the Bollinger Band that much, but in the short term, I like the indicator very much. Now, that was the trading tip for today. Go and check out the Bollinger Band on TradingView and see for yourself how it has been playing out every time again and again and again. Of course, like every indicator, it can't be right for 100%, but like an average, the Bollinger Band is a very good indication of where to enter or exit the market. That was the trading tip for today. The travel tip for today is a very simple one because I didn't have a real travel tip. I couldn't find any travel tip anymore in the back of my head. But one travel tip is, if you are doubting to start traveling, I know it's very scary, you know? A lot of people are like, oh, should I sell the house and then go start travel like Didi did? Or maybe start with step by step. So for example, if you haven't traveled before for a very long time with your family, just try it first. Try it. Go to your boss, tell your boss, hey, I want an unpaid relief for one or two months because I'm going to travel the world with my family for two months just to have this beautiful time with my family. And maybe you can get that unpaid relief, maybe even take your holiday days and an unpaid relief so that you don't lose your full salary and then try it for two months, baby steps. And after those two months, you come back with your family and you just analyze if you really love the travel lifestyle. Let's say you decide that you like the travel uh, lifestyle and you want to keep traveling, but you still want to keep your job. You can always go home and go to your boss and tell your boss, hey, step by step, is it not possible that I work from home like one or two days a week? Maybe he will agree. And maybe when he agrees, your performance will even go up in those two days not working on the office. And then two days become three days and four days. And maybe in the end you can tell your boss or convince him, hey, I want to travel again for two months. Can I not keep working while I'm traveling? So I will do my job every day in the normal times that you expect me to work, uh, but I will be traveling as well. And maybe your boss will agree with the experiment and that is how you start. And then of course, when you really are positive about all the steps that you have taken, yes, then you sell the house, sell everything else, and then you go all in. That is how you do it step by step. You don't need to do it directly all in. The travel tip for the day, please experience it first if you really like traveling as a family before you give up everything you have. Because I know it is a huge step, and we've taken the step, but I also know that if you try it step by step that you can easily get adjusted to a new lifestyle, guys. That was the travel tip for today. Then we get to the question for today, guys. The question was of one of the followers was, what do I need to do? It wasn't like one follower, like, like 10 followers asking the same question, I think, even in the lives yesterday. So in the bear market, when I have exited the Bitcoin in the bull market top, I am there with a shitload of USDT. What should I do with those USDT in the bear market? In the bear market, which is always 12 months, we just keep the USDT wherever you think it's safe. If you believe that Bybit is safe, keep it on Bybit. If you believe your hardware wallet is a little bit more safe, then keep them on your hardware wallet. If you believe a non-custodial wallet on your telephone is safe, then keep them on your telephone. Look, a hardware wallet, a ledger that you buy, is of course a very safe way to store your Bitcoins, Ethereum, USDT. But you can also use a second-hand iPhone, like an old iPhone that you have. Just install the Bitcoin wallet on that iPhone, then lose the connection with the internet, and then put that iPhone in your safe uh, with that wallet on it. That's also a very safe way of storing your cryptocurrencies. So I always diversify during the bear market, so a huge part of the USDT will be sent indeed uh, to my hardware wallet, but also a part I will use, of course, and buy it to trade. Because the bear market, I want to accumulate more and more and more USDT. Because during that downward movement of Bitcoin, it's very simple to short Bitcoin 
and to earn USDT so that at the bottom you can buy a shitload of Bitcoin back with those earned USDT. I trust Bybit that they won't fail or that they won't stop existing in a bear market because they have done now three cycles. It is a very good exchange so I will let a huge part also on Bybit to be able to trade. Now that was my answer to that question. So the USDT, I will stack them partly on my hardware wallet, partly on my software wallet, partly on an exchange, diversifying it, but always keep trading. Now let's jump into the next part. The news for today is about the Thai exchange Zipmax. They have been ordered by the Thai SEC, yes, Thailand also has a SEC, to shut down their business till they have cleared up their whole finance position. This is exactly why I always tell you to start using decentralized exchanges more and more. Because even in countries like Thailand, there is a SEC, and even they have something to say about decentralized exchanges. And of course, I'm using centralized exchanges as well, but huge part of my capital is already being traded and used on, for example, Apex Pro, my favorite decentralized exchange. And why? Because they can't be stopped by the SEC. It is a decentralized protocol that doesn't have an office, it doesn't have like people behind it, that they can knock on the door and tell them, hey, you should stop now because we are the SEC. They are decentralized. And there is many decentralized exchanges that you can use to trade. Apex Pro is my favorite one. There is a beautiful trading competition going on at the moment. You get a sign-up bonus, etc., etc. And I believe they are just the most liquid decentralized exchange out there that gives you really a centralized exchange experience. So yes, you can put buy orders, you can put sell orders, you can do leverage, you can do all the same things that you can do on Bybit, but you just connect your Bitcoin wallet to that exchange. So even even in the worst case scenario, if the Thai SEC or the United States SEC or whatever SEC it is wants to ban that decentralized exchange from their country or tells that exchange to stop doing business, your Bitcoins, Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies are still on your wallet. They can't take them. They are unconfiscatable because they are not on that exchange. A centralized exchange you send your crypto to and they hold your cryptos in their cold wallets of that exchange. If they need to stop doing business, you can't do any withdrawals. A decentralized exchange, your cryptos are always on your self-custodial wallet. So whatever happens, they won't be able to stop you from withdrawing your Bitcoins, Ethereum or any other cryptocurrency. So I think it's very important that you start to understand this because this cycle, yes, decentralized exchanges will still be massively leading all of it because most people still are used to centralized exchanges and even the spot ETFs, they are using a centralized exchange. They are all using Coinbase, for example. So this cycle, yes, it is still very important that you use uh, decentralized exchanges, but the next cycle, I want you to be prepared to start to use these decentralized exchanges more and more and more. It is just very important, guys. Check out Apex Pro. Just check it out. You don't need to deposit anything. Just check the exchange out. Just click the link down below. You have a welcome bonus. You can even join the now the Chinese New Year Dragon something competition. Really cool again. So just check it out and see for yourself what you think about it. I know it will take you a few hours to find out how to connect your wallet and everything. But believe me, for safety reasons, that is always worth your time. Now, that was the news for today. Zipmax needs to shut down business because of the Thai SEC telling them that's why I don't like centralized entities. Ah, maybe I should say that's why I hate centralized entities. No like is like very soft expression for the feelings I have now about these centralized entities like the SEC, like governments, and like all those motherfuckers with suits that think they can rule us. Yes, we are here to set us free. Bitcoin is freedom and freedom will lead to happiness. And yes, peaceful anarchy will be the way to achieve that freedom state of mind, in my honest opinion. And I think that Bitcoin and blockchain are the perfect tools to create that peaceful energy, guys. So now that was the news for today. Let's quickly jump now into the next part. And the last part of the video, guys, is of course uh, the life lesson, the inspirational part. I don't even know how to call it anymore. I don't want to be that arrogant dude that wants to teach you the life uh, lessons. It's just, you know, I'm just talking about things that come up to my mind when I wake up in the morning and I just want to share them with you people out there that are watching my videos. But because of the questions I saw 
this uh, weekend in all my um, lives, I got to think about why is it that people always wonder if certain things are possible, if they are capable to take certain steps. Because people seem to think that they are in full control and that is why they ask certain questions like, um, yeah, but I don't think it's possible. I don't think I'm allowed. I don't think I can do that. You know, all these kinds of doubtful um, opinions about themselves and their surroundings. And the quote for today is one that really fits to that one. Because I believe that you have a pair of brains in your head. I believe that you have a pair of feet in your shoes. So I believe you can steer yourself in any direction you want. Your brain just needs to tell your feet to start moving in a certain direction. Not your boss, not your wife, not your brother, not your sister, not your uncle, not Santa Claus, not any of those, not the Pope, not any religion. You. It is your brain that can steer your feet to move in a certain direction. And if the job is in that direction and you don't like it anymore, then your brain needs to start telling your feet that they need to start fly that direction. If they can't fly that direction, then start to run in that direction. If they can't start to run into that direction, then start to crawl into that direction. But please have your brain tell your feet to move in the direction that you want to move, and not the direction that everyone else wants you to move, or you're supposed to move because of the norms and values of the surroundings you grew up in. That is not the way of living a free life. Living a free life is setting the thoughts of your brain, your inner self, your gut feeling free to steer your feet and your hands in any direction you want. And that's not running a hamster wheel. I know that you keep running in that direction, but when your brain tells you, hey, it's time to stop the hamster wheel and jump out of the hamster wheel and start running in the other direction, that is the, probably the moment that you should listen to your brain because else you will end up in a huge burnout. Because if you keep running a hamster wheel against your real will or passion, you will run into a burnout. And that burnout will be a signal of your body, of your brain, telling you to stop running that hamster wheel, to turn around, start listening to your gut, start listening to your brain, the chatting of the stool like the devil and the angel, and then make up your own mind because you're leaning back. You're not the devil, you're not that angel, you're just leaning back, observing the discussion, and then decide for yourself, hey, I think my brain should start to tell my feet to walk in that direction. And then you follow your brain and your feet into that direction. And that is when that new life really will start and when you will start to enjoy life a little bit more bit by bit, guys. I hope, of course, that your brains are telling you now to start investing in Bitcoin. I hope your brains will tell you now, withdraw all your cash from your banking system, sell your third car, sell your second car, sell all the stuff on your attic and in your basement and in your garage that you're not be using for the last couple of five years and put it all into Bitcoin. I hope that your brain is telling you that at the moment because that will also set you financially free from all that thinking that you have now. Will I survive that other way of living if I don't have the amount of assets that I think that I would need for it or require for it. Sell all that shit that you don't need. Go into Bitcoin now, run that bull market, quadruple maybe your capital in the next 12 to 18 months, then that financial problem is already solved. Then you only need to solve your mental problem of your brain starting to steer your feet in the right direction. And that's when you're there, guys. Now, that was everything for today. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy today's video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. What do you think about the charts? What do you think about everything else? Thank you for watching. I wish you an amazing Monday and see you tomorrow on Tuesday again. Bam.